All right, y'all, so 8.5 deals with rational functions. And remember, rational function still means we're dealing with fraction expressions, okay? Now, they start out with the first two. The first two problems in this section, they're having you find a domain. So that's just like we did in 5.1 last class. So I'm going to skip those two doing the domain since y'all know how to do that. And we're going to get into some definitions for the next problem. So we're going to learn what a vertical asymptote is. Now, I'll abbreviate this later as the VA for vertical asymptote, okay? So, since we're dealing with rational functions and the bottom of the fraction cannot equal zero, that's where these vertical asymptotes come from. It's an imaginary vertical line. that the graph cannot cross. Okay, so it's just an imaginary dotted line that the graph cannot cross. They occur where the function is undefined and they come in the form of an equation. which will be x equals some number. So if my function was undefined at 2, my vertical asymptote would be x equals 2, okay? So to find the vertical asymptotes, we set the denominator. equal to zero and solve. So it's exactly like you did when you were finding the domain of a function. Since these occur where they're undefined, they'll have the same solutions as your domain did, okay? Now there's one thing we got to watch out for. If there's a factor in the numerator, so if a factor from the numerator matches a factor from the denominator, then the vertical asymptote is canceled and it makes a hole in the graph. Okay, so it's going to make a hole in the graph. The graph will still go along, but it'll just have a hole there. Now, 
if it doesn't have a factor on the top that cancels with a factor in the bottom, then it will actually make a vertical asymptote there. So I'm going to show you an example of a hole and a vertical asymptote here. So um, okay, so we're going to look at the graph of f of x equals x over x squared plus 2x. So y'all, I'm just going to put me a graph over here. Alrighty, so I'm going to find my vertical asymptotes by setting the bottom equal to zero. And solving that for the x's. So this one, since I got an x in both terms, I would factor out my x as the greatest common factor. And in the parentheses, that would leave me an x plus 2 all equal to the zero. So I know what the bottom factors into. It factors into an x and an x plus 2. Now, do you notice on the top, I got a factor of x on the top also. So this is what I'm talking about right here. A factor on the numerator matches a factor in the denominator. It's going to cancel out that asymptote. So the only asymptote I'm going to get is from the x plus 2. Okay? So remember, the x factor cancels with the x on top. All right, y'all, so solving this, we would subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x equals a negative 2. So on my graph over here at negative 2 would be a vertical asymptote. So my graph cannot cross over this line, okay? Now... It's also undefined at zero here, remember, because if I was looking for my domain, it would be undefined at zero and negative two. So over here at zero on the y-axis, wherever it crosses, it's going to make a hole in the graph. So y'all, let me show you what this graph looks like on my calculator. So look what it's going to do over here at negative two, okay? So I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to put in my x on top divided by. Now, when you're doing these kind of graphs, if you got more than one part in the numerator or denominator, they got to be in parentheses. So I'm going to do my x squared plus 2x. All right, so notice I got my equation in. Now, another way you could have done it, so I'm going to clear this. This is one way. The other way, you could hit the alpha green button and the y equals. And nd means numerator over denominator. And you can put the x in that way, arrow down, and put in the x squared plus 2x. So if you really want it to look like their problems, you can do it with the alpha y equals, okay? All right, so I just want to show you all the graph, show you all how on the, so on this left side, where one part's going down and one part's going up, that's because it's like an imaginary line right there that the graph cannot cross over. Now, you can't see the hole in the graph, but I'm going to go to the table and show you, you get an error at negative 2 because it's undefined there. But you also get an error at 0 where it was undefined. Okay? Those errors mean that it was undefined there. So, notice it didn't make the asymptote at the 0. 
so it makes a hole in the graph. So I'm just going to sketch that a second and show you all exactly what's going on. All right, so let me go back to my paper. So technically, this side is coming straight down, and it'll keep going down forever. It will never cross over that line, okay? Same thing on this side. It's going to keep going up towards infinity, but it will never cross our dotted line. All right, it was undefined here, but that factor canceled out, so it didn't make the asymptote. It made a hoe. And y'all, that's what we're talking about when we talk about vertical asymptotes. Imaginary lines that the graph cannot cross over, okay? All right, then we're going to look at what we call horizontal asymptotes. And I'll call them HA. Now, we'll show you. On this picture I got drawn, see how this line is trying to get closer and closer to the x-axis? And it's doing it in both directions. These are what we call the horizontal asymptotes. They try to approach a number, but they never can equal that number. They just keep getting closer and closer as this graph heads out towards infinity in either direction. So it's almost like an imaginary horizontal line that the graph tries to approach in either direction okay now they come in the form of an equation they come in the form of well if x's were my vertical lines my horizontal lines will be y equals some number. And we'll be able to tell what number they're going to approach because there's three different cases that can happen. So, y'all, that almost be like if I drew me an imaginary dotted line. It would keep trying to get to it, okay? So, let's see. There's three cases that can determine a horizontal asymptote. Now, we compare the degree of the numerator with the degree of the denominator. So, if the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, then so the top has a bigger exponent than the bottom. That is the only case where there is no horizontal asymptote. That's because the top's getting so big and big and big that your graph is just going to keep climbing. It's not going to try to reach a number, okay? So how about if the degree of the bottom... is greater than the degree of the top. So it's top heavy, there's no horizontal asymptote. If it's bottom heavy, if the bottom is bigger than the top, when you're looking at them exponents, then the asymptote will be y equals zero. Because the bottom is growing faster than the top, and when that happens, 
your answers as you keep getting bigger and bigger X's are going to get closer and closer to zero, okay? So y'all look at that. We did the top bigger, no horizontal asymptote. Bottom bigger, Y equals zero is your asymptote. What if they're equal? If the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom. So if the degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom, they got the same highest exponents, then it looks like y equals a over b. A and B are the lead coefficients. So A is the lead coefficient on top. Remember, the lead coefficient is whatever's numbers in front of the X that has the biggest exponent. And then B is the lead coefficient on the bottom. So I use that if they're equal. Now remember, if you got an x to the third and it don't have a number in front of it, it treats it like a one. All right, so let me start doing some of the exercises like they're doing. So um, this first one, they're going to give me a function and they want me to find the asymptotes and then match it with one of the graphs. So I'm going to show you how to graph them on your calculator. So all you got to do is pick A, B, C, D. We don't have to physically graph them. We just got to be able to identify one of the four pictures, okay? Out of y'all. So This example says list all the asymptotes, then graph. Now, I will say this. We're only going to do the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes. There will be a section that says um, sometimes on some of the problems it'll say, what is the oblique asymptotes? You're going to put there is no oblique asymptote when it asks for that, okay? None of ours will have an oblique. But these problems, they included that with them, so you just got to skip over that and put none, okay? All right, y'all, so here we go. R of X equals 5 over x squared minus 64. So all we got to do is find the asymptotes and then look at the graphs. So I'm going to start with my vertical asymptote. For the vertical asymptotes, we said we took the bottom, set it equal to zero. Now, two ways you can solve this. One way, you can add 64 and do the square root. Okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factor this. Um, and show you that way. Because this is called the difference of perfect squares. X squared is X times X. 64 is 8 times 8. So when you got this, what we call the per, uh, difference of perfect squares, you'll have an X in the front of both. The last number is negative, remember? So one will be positive, one will be negative. And then you take the square root of 64, which is 8. So 8 and 8 are factors of 64 that would subtract to give you 0 since there's not an X in the middle, okay? So these are conjugate pairs. So difference of perfect squares always factors into conjugate pairs. And y'all, at that point, I would set both those equal to 0. 
and solve. So we're just changing signs like we've been doing for a while. So x is going to equal negative 8. And in here, we would add our 8. And x equals a positive 8. So if you'd have done the square roots, square root of 64 would have gave you a plus or minus 8. All right, so these are my vertical asymptotes. So now I'm going to find my horizontal asymptote. So remember, for the horizontal asymptote, I look at the degree. Well, y'all, there's not an X on top. Since there's not a variable on top, the degree on the top is zero. If you don't have a variable, then it's a degree zero. Now, the degree on bottom. Well, on the bottom, the highest exponent is a two. So that means that the degree of the bottom is a two. So look here, the bottom degree is greater than the top. So bottom degree greater than the top degree. Well, y'all, we just said there was three cases, and when the bottom degree was higher than the top degree, then I would get y equals zero. So my two verticals and my one horizontal. So um, we'll punch that on the calculator. But I just want to show you something here. So over here at negative 8 and over here at positive 8, we're going to have vertical asymptotes. which means the graph will not cross over those. Now, the horizontal asymptote was y equals 0. So that means pretty much the x-axis is y equals 0. So as my graph heads out these x's, it's going to try to get closer to this line, okay? Now, if we want a nice picture of what it's going to look like, I'm going to go throw it in my TI-84. So let me go to my calculator. I'm going to go to y equals and clear that out. So I'm going to hit the green button, alpha, and y equals, and make mine look like a fraction like they got. So I had a 5 on top. Now I'm going to arrow down to the bottom, and I had an x squared minus 64. All right, so remember, we had those two asymptotes, so at negative 8 and 8, we should see that where it's shooting up and down, okay? And then look at the ends of it. It's going to start headed towards that zero. So here we go, y'all. So, yeah, you can see we're over here on the left side at negative 8. One side's up and down. Over here at positive 8, one side's down and up. So if I'm going to draw that... All right, so let's go back. So it went up and down on my asymptotes on both sides. And then this was the inner part of that graph, okay? And as this goes towards infinity, these lines will try to get down to that zero. They just can't never reach it, okay? So this one would have four pictures. Um, some of them, they'll draw them down instead of, and they'll change the U and stuff. So they'll give you four pictures, and you're just going to choose the one that matches your graph, okay? All righty, then it's going to make us find a few vertical asymptotes, and then we'll find some horizontals. And then at the end, we'll do some more graphing, okay? So for these next few examples, 
I'm going to be find the vertical asymptote. All right, so I'll start mine at about number five. So the first one, f of x equals one over x minus two squared. All right, so there's no factors on top to worry about. So I'm just going to play with the bottom and see what we get. So we're going to set x minus two squared equal to zero. Well, x minus 2 squared means x minus 2 times x minus 2. So I got a repeating factor. So since I got a repeating factor, I've only got to solve that one time. Okay? You don't have to solve each factor when there are repeats. Remember, when, there, when we got a multiplicity 2, Remember, those zeros sort of touch, and then they come back down. They don't cross over, okay? Um, but y'all ain't got to know all that. All you got to do is be able to solve that and get x equals 2. Now, careful on that. Math Lab already has the x equals. So all we got to put on that one is our 2, okay? So make sure in the answer blanks, do they have the x equals or do I got to put it, okay? And right, look here, six, f of x equals x minus five over x squared plus two x. So I do have an x minus 5 on top. So when I factor this and get it factored, if I get an x minus 5 out of that, I'm going to cancel out that asymptote. But I don't think that's happening because I don't see no 5s. So I'm going to set x squared plus 2x equal to 0. Remember, now this one is an x squared and an x. That is a common factor. So we're going to factor out the x. That'll leave a x plus 2 in parentheses. So now I'm factored. None of those will cancel with an x minus 5. So that means both answers will be counted as an asymptote. So I set the first x equal to 0. So y'all remember, the single x is always equal to 0 all year long. And then we'll set x plus 2 equal to 0. And on that, and I'll subtract 2 and get x is a negative 2. Okay. Um, so in the blank, I think this one was a multiple choice, and you had to find the one that had x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. Okay. So y'all, what's nice? Finding vertical asymptotes is the same as finding domains, pretty much, okay? All right, 7. f of x equals x minus 3 over 1 minus x. So, I'm going to set 1 minus x equal to 0. And you can't do nothing else as far as factoring. So I know they're not going to cancel. So whatever answer I get here, I'm going to keep, okay? All right, y'all, so I got to solve this. Um, so two ways you can do this. One way is you can subtract 1 and then divide by the negative. The second way, you could just add x to both sides and you get 1 equals x. Either way, um, A lot of y'all like keeping the x on the left side, so I'll do that. So I get negative x is negative 1. But remember, we can't keep the x negative, so we got to divide by negative 1 on both sides. So all that does when you divide by negative 1, it's just changing the signs. Two negatives made that positive. 
two negatives here, made that a positive one. So the only horizontal on that one, now this one, they actually give you the X equals, and you come in and put A1 there. I'm sorry, I had a quick question. Uh-huh. Um, for number six, um, uh, going back to number six. So um, can you just explain to me again, how did you actually um, uh, get the X parentheses X plus two? Okay. So what you got to do to these is you got to try to factor them out. And so when I look at this uh, on the side here, my X squared plus two X, the first step to factoring is looking for a greatest common factor. So you got two X's here and you got a two and one X here. The greatest factor that they got in common is one X each. So since this X was the greatest common factor, I'm pretty much dividing it out and putting that answer into parentheses. Um, so if you got an X squared and you take out one of the X's, you're left with one X. Mm -hmm. And then my 2x, if I take out that x, leaves me a 2. All right, okay. Okay, so you always want to look first um, at a greatest common factor if it's possible, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll have some more of those, so you'll get more practice on that common factor stuff. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, y'all, so f of x here is a 3 over x plus 5 times x minus 1. So this one's already factored for us. If they're in parentheses, you're pretty happy because they done did the factoring. All we got to do is set both these factors equal to 0. And I'm not worried about the top this time because there's not even a variable up there. So we'll come in and set our x plus 5 equal to 0 and our x minus 1. All right, solving both of those. I'm going to do the opposite by subtracting, and I get x is a negative 5. And y'all, this one, I'm going to add 1 and get x is a positive 1. These are almost like when you found zeros. The zeros were always opposite signs in the factors. Well, so are these asymptotes, okay? All right, and then I think that had a A, B, C, D choice on it, too. Most of these had, like, A, B, C, D choices where they wrote them out for you. Some of them you actually had to put the answer in the box. All right, y'all, so our next one here, it's going to be a lot of factoring. All right, so let me move that back up. So this would be like my number nine I'm showing. F of X equals X squared plus 4X minus 12 over X squared minus 2X minus 8. All righty, so I've got to factor the top and bottom just to see if I got any factors that might ca cancel out. Now, these are trinomials, x squared, x, and a number. So those are going to factor into two sets of parentheses. And then the bottom, I'm going to make two sets of parentheses. Now, the top one, x squared, that means you're going to put an x in the front of each of these parentheses. Now, y'all watch this. I'm focusing on that last sign again. Anytime your last number is negative, you're going to have unlike signs on your factors. And y'all, even the bottom, look, it's negative at the end. 
So it'll have one X positive and one X negative. We know that right off the bat because of these negatives at the end. Now what we got to do, since that's negative, I want factors of 12 that subtract to get four. So factors of 12 that subtract to get four. On the bottom, I'll find factors of eight that subtract to get two. So y'all with some guesses, give me two factors of 12 that subtract and give me a four. And we don't have but three possible choices. One and 12, two six and six, and three and six four. And six and two. Six and two. Now here's where you gotta watch out. The larger factor has to have the same sign as the number in the middle. So since four is positive, my larger number six has to be positive and my two negative. Now to check yourself, six minus two equals four. So let's try that with the eight. Finally, factors of eight that subtract to get two. And on that one, we only got two possible choices. So what am I getting? Uh, so four and two, perfect. Right, four times two is eight, but when you subtract, you get two. Now this time, the middle number is negative. So my larger number four will be the negative and two will be my positive. So that if I add two and negative four, it equals that negative two. Now, y'all, the reason I had to do all that, I had to make sure that none of these factors on bottom canceled and nothing cancels because those ain't the same sign. So nothing cancels. So now I can take my X plus two and my X minus four and set them equal to zero. So we will solve both of these. And we get to keep both of the asymptotes because nothing canceled. So the first one I'll subtract two. We'll get X equals a negative two. And then here we will add four and get X is a positive four. And y'all, that's the trick, is just paying attention to these signs on that factoring. Okay? So they had one more of these, and then we'll do the um, horizontal. So I got G of X is a X to the third over 5X to the third minus X squared minus 22x. Now, I'm not worried about the top right now, but I'm going to redo it like I did this one because of that bottom here. Now, on the top, x to the third, that's just the x times the x times the x. What we got to do over here on the side is try to factor this thing. 5x to the third minus x squared minus 22x. So, I'm going to try to factor this. But, y'all, what's the very first thing I'm going to do when I factor that? And y'all, it's similar to what I did with that x squared plus 2x wall go. What do all three of them have in common? GCF of x. A GCF of x, there you go. So you factor out the x, everybody goes down by 1x. So that I got a 5x squared minus 1x in the middle 
minus 22. Now, I got to try to factor this. So this X will come down, and that is going to factor into parentheses like our other trinomials. Y'all, the only difference is this time we got a number in front. So let me show you how this is going to go down. When you got a number in front, you got to take that 5 and multiply by 22. That's going to give me 110. One hundred and ten is the number I'm going to find factors of that subtract. Remember, they still got to subtract because of that negative, and they got to equal one. Since there's not a number in front of that x, we treat it like a one. So I'm going to find factors of one ten that'll give me a one when I subtract. So y'all, let me show you a trick. If you don't know the factors of one ten, we got a calculator. I'm going to go to y equals and clear this off. Whatever number you want the factors of, I want factors of 110. I'm going to take 110 and I'm going to divide by x. So that now when I look in my table, I'm going to have all the factors. So we're, we're taking 110 and dividing by x. So that when we hit second graph for the table, so y'all let me get my X's down here. I'm going to start at zero. We don't want no negative numbers. So the smallest factor, one times 110. Two times 55. Remember, I need a difference of one. Next would be five and 22. That's not working. Uh, none of those are dividing. Oh, look at that. 10 and 11. 11 minus 10 equals 1. So that's the two numbers I'm going to pick. So let's go back. So it was 10 and 11. Now remember, in the front, we're going to have our x and our x. One's positive and one's negative because of that negative. The larger number will be negative like the middle. But y'all watch this. You're going to put the 11 here and then make it look like a fraction. Put the 10 here, make it look like a fraction. Because we got one more step to do. Since we borrowed that 5 and multiplied by the 22 to get to 110, and we got factors that equal the middle, since we multiplied by the 5 here, we got to divide both these factors by that 5. Now, this X is coming down still. But y'all, this we can divide 10 by 5. So that'll give me what? An X plus 2. Now right here, 11 does not divide by 5. So what you got to do when it won't divide, you got to take the bottom number and put it in front of the X so that you get a 5 x minus 11. All right, everything's factored. We cannot factor no further. So x times x plus 2 times 5x minus 11. Now, you don't have to do a lot of factoring in here with a number in front. Um, but yeah, that's how I do it. I follow the same sign rules, except you got to multiply the 5 times 22, find the factors, and then divide the 5 back out. So my next question, are any of my vertical asymptotes going to cancel? So let me ask you this. Do any factors on bottom cancel with any factors on top? Well, y'all, these X's definitely do, don't they? 
That X cancels with that X. So since those X's canceled out, it cancels our vertical asymptote. So all we got to do is set the other two to zero. X plus two equals zero. 5x minus 11 equals zero. Remember, single x's can cancel out too, okay? All right, y'all, here we go. Minus 2. I get x equals a negative 2. Here I'm going to add 11 and then divide. So that gives me what, 11 over 5. All right, and then that one, you might have had to put them in the box. So I think they got the x equals. And then you put in your negative 2 and your 11 fifths, okay? All righty, y'all. So then we get into horizontal asymptotes which are probably easier than these because you don't have to do a lot of factoring. So here we go. Determine the horizontal asymptote. Now, y'all remember, there's only three cases. I'm looking at the degree on top versus the degree on bottom. Who's bigger or are they equal? Okay. So, how about f of x equals 5x to the third plus 4 over 3x to the third minus 2? So let's see, what's the degree on top? And then what's the degree on the bottom? Well, y'all, the degree on top is the highest exponent, which is a 3. The degree on the bottom is the highest exponent. Would be 3. Uh-huh. And remember, when they were equal, so the top equals the bottom, we said that the asymptote would be y equals a over b. So this is going to look like this when we're done, a over b. Well, what's a and what's b? Well, a was the lead coefficient on top. Well, the lead coefficient is that 5. B was the lead coefficient of the bottom. Well, y'all, in front of that 3x to the third, that lead coefficient would be the 3. So when these variables match with the exponents, we look at the numbers in front. So that tells me at 5 thirds, which is what? Be about 1 and 2 thirds, almost at 2. There would be like a horizontal imaginary line that the graph tries to get to, okay? So when they're equal, look at the numbers in front. All right, what about a f of x equals x squared minus 5 over 3x to the 4th plus 5? So let's see, what's my degree on top? Two. All right, degree on the bottom? Four. Which means my bottom is greater than the top. Well, y'all, when we said the bottom had a greater degree than the top, my asymptote was what? Oh, it will be, so y equals, the top will be 4. Wait a minute. 
Oh, you're, doing, you're doing too much. You're doing too yeah, much. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so y'all remember, here's my chart I'm looking at. So your bottom is greater than the top. It automatically is Y equals zero. Zero. <laughs> All right, let me see what my chat, my chat might have been trying to chime in. I didn't see that lit up. So Y equals zero. Good job. All right, y'all. F of X equals X to the third minus 2X squared plus a X minus 4 all divided by X squared minus 18. All right, so we want to see what our degrees are. So the degree at the top And then what are y'all getting for the degree of the bottom? So how about the top? I drew y'all an arrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the top is a three, highest exponent, and the bottom two. is a two. That's its biggest exponent. So what did I say on my chart if the bottom was smaller? So this one is the top is greater than the bottom. Well, that would have been case number one. So let's see what my chat's saying. So no oh, horizontal patient. asymptote. Good job. Okay. All righty. So next, what I'm going to do, the rest of this is just um, having you find like the um, x-intercept, y-intercepts, domain and stuff. So I'm going to do a couple of those to show you all how to do those. So let's see. Well, let me move this back up. So, y'all, these will say find the domain. So, the domain I'm going to be doing in interval notation with the uh, infinity and the parentheses. Any asymptotes. Now, remember, if they ask for oblique asymptotes, you put none. All right, then the X and Y intercepts. And then choose the graph. Now, some of these, depending on what window they give you on the graph, if their graph is going like negative 100 to 100, Change the window of your calculator to match it with the X min and X max, Y min and Y max. So, y'all, this one I'm doing, let's see, I'm going to do F of X equals 3X plus 3 over X. So, first where I'm going to find my domain. So to find the domain, we set the denominator equal to zero. Well, if I set my denominator equal to zero, x equals zero, I'm done. Zero is the only number I got to worry about in my domain. So remember, we got to write it in interval notation. So they all start at negative infinity. And then since it's undefined at zero, I got to kick out zero by unioning around it. And then from zero, we head towards positive infinity. So the union is how we kick them out, remember? So the first answer would be this interval notation. 
Oh, let's see what they want next. They want the X intercept. So the X intercept member is where it crosses over the X axis. So to find that, we set the numerator equal to zero. So that's the top. So I'm going to set 3x plus 3 equal to zero. And solve that for the x. So here, subtract 3. So I get 3x equals negative 3. And then y'all divide by 3 on each side. So I get x equals negative 1. Now, since I'm finding the x-intercept, remember, the x-intercept has to be written as an ordered pair. So that would be negative 1, comma, 0. So remember, x-intercepts always have a y value of 0, okay? All right, so the y-intercept... To find the y-intercept, I find f of 0. That means I put a 0 in for all the x's and see what I get. When y'all look at this, if I put a 0 in, I get 3 times 0 plus 3 on top over 0. Can we even work that? No, we can't work this because there's a zero in the bottom of the fraction. This thing's undefined. And remember over here, we done said, hey, when X is zero, that thing was undefined. So when you get a X in a Y intercept like this and it's undefined at that point, that means there is no Y intercept. Well, y'all, it can't cross over the y-axis if it's undefined there, remember. That's going to be a vertical asymptote, actually. All right, so let's find our vertical asymptote. Well, the vertical asymptote is the same as the domain. I take the denominator, set it equal to zero. So doing that, I get x equals 0. So that you have to put in as an equation, remember. Um, and then this one here, you had to put in as an ordered pair. So last is my horizontal asymptote. Well, look at this. The degree of the top is a 1. The degree of the bottom is a 1. Anytime you don't have an exponent there, it's a 1. So the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom. Since their degrees are equal, this will equal the lead coefficient on top, which is a 3. The lead coefficient on bottom. Well, y'all, there's not a number in front of that x. So if there's not a number in front of it, you better put a 1 in front. So this is 3 over 1, which means this will reduce to a y equals 3. Okay, so then uh, on that one, I think they was doing a normal graph. So let me show you now. On the calculator to make it look like a fraction i'm going to hit the alpha y equals okay so here we go i'm gonna go back to my y equals and clear this so alpha y equals and enter will make it look like a fraction on top i had a 3x plus 3 Arrow down to the bottom, I had an X. 
So remember, we said it cannot cross over to zero because that was my vertical asymptote. And as it goes towards infinity, it's trying to reach three for the horizontals. All right, y'all, then we hit graph. And there you go. See how it's got the asymptotes along the x-axis where it's zero, which means it's going right up and down on that y-axis. And if you notice, to the left, it's trying to get closer to three. And I'll show you on the table here, if you look at the table, as I get bigger and bigger and bigger, 42 over 13, they're getting closer and closer to three if you looked at those in decimal form, okay? All right, so I'm going to go back up here to zero on that. And see, at zero, you get an error because it was undefined at that spot. So, y'all, that's the trick on that is to um, graph them on your calculator and match it with one of those four. The, you'll have four distinct pictures, so you'll be able to tell quick which one, okay? All right, y'all, let me see what I got next. All right, so I wanted to do another one of them, and then I'll play with the support. So, y'all, this one is f of x equals x plus 3 over x squared minus 9. So, first of all, is my domain. And I'm going to find a domain by setting the denominator equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is factor this. Now remember, they're being subtracted. There's no greatest common factor. So this is the difference of perfect squares. I'll have an x and an x. Last number is negative. So one's positive, one's negative. And then the square root of 9 is a 3. So you get 3 and 3. So now, set them equal to zero. And we'll solve by subtracting three on our first one. And adding three on the second one. Now, my question is, can I keep both of these asymptotes? All right, well, let me do my domain first, and then we'll play with that question, okay? All right, so negative infinity, we kick out negative 3 first by union and around negative 3. Then we head to positive 3. We're going to union and around positive 3, and then head off to infinity. And I'll do the y-intercept first, and then we'll end up. Uh, X-intercept and Y-intercept. So let me do the X-intercept first. X-intercept, I said, set the numerator equal to zero. But y'all, guess what? This X plus 3 factor on top cancels with the X plus 3 factor on the bottom. Remember, this is actually an X plus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Since that factor cancels with that denominator, there is no x-intercept. Because you can't have an x-intercept where something is undefined at, okay? So remember, factors cancel. It cancels out the x-intercept, and it cancels out the asymptote at that point. And it's going to make a hole in it, okay? Y-intercept, we find f is 0. Well, that'll be 0 plus 3 on the top. 0 squared minus 9 on the bottom. So basically, that's a 3 over negative 9, which I'll make into, what, a negative uh, 
Well, I guess both of them divide by three. So that's going to give me a negative one third. So remember, the y intercept has a zero for the x and a negative one third for the y value. So that means no matter what, this graph crosses over the y axis at a negative one third. So vertical asymptote, will I be checking both of those factors? No, because the x plus 3 factor cancels out. So the only factor I got to check for my vertical asymptote is the x minus 3. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. Remember, the x plus 3 factor canceled with the top. So where the x plus 3 factor would have been is going to be a hole, okay? All right, so let's solve this one by adding our 3. And I get x equals 3. Horizontal asymptote. Well, let's see. We got to compare the degree of the top to the degree of the bottom. Well, the top degree is a 1. Bottom degree is a 2. So, y'all, the bottom degree is bigger than the top degree. So, when the bottom was bigger, it's bottom heavy compared to the top. We said that that would be y equals 0. Now, remember on these, there's no oblique asymptotes, okay? All right, y'all. So, let me show you how I would put this one in. So, I'm going to go to the calculator. Go to y equals. I'm going to clear this. Now, alpha y equals to make it look like a fraction. If you don't do that and you just want to type it in, you got to put parentheses around the top and the bottom. So parentheses, x plus 3. Close parentheses. Then divide by, open parentheses, x squared minus 9. And then close parentheses. Either way, you can use the alpha y equals, or you can put the top and bottom in parentheses. Whoops, I did too many parentheses. Let me go back and delete that one. All right, so let me show you the graph. Now, we can't see the hole at that zero, but you can see that there's only one asymptote over there at the three on the x-axis. But let me show you the table. Look at zero on this table. At zero, there's that negative one-third. I got an error at three. And remember, the one that canceled out over here at negative three and made a hole shows you the error message, okay? Now, if you look over here at negative three on my graph, you can't see that hole. But on their answer choices... When they got the graph over here, um, let me sort of draw this. Oh, that's too hard. Um, but y'all, you won't be able to see the hole on the graph and calculator. But Math Lab, the four graphs, they will have a hole there, okay? All righty, so now I'm going to show you. Um, 8.6 support. Now, 8.6 college algebra will be Monday, okay? So I ain't decided how I'm doing it yet. Either I'm doing 8.6 and then reviewing for the test afterward, or I'm going to do 8.6 and then 9.3 from the next test and then we'll review Thursday. Um, 8.6 ain't very long. 
So I'm thinking I'll probably do 8.6 Tuesday and then review Tuesday so that y'all got longer time to practice for that test, okay? So, all right, 8.6 support was just uh, practice solving equations. So the first one they say solve um, parentheses 7t plus 3 times 4t minus 12 equals 0. So, y'all, this one, you're just setting everything equal to 0 because it's already factored. So you're setting 7t plus 3 equal to 0, and then your 4t minus 12 equal to 0. And then you're going to solve both of these, okay? So let's see here. Uh, what? Subtract 3. 7t will equal that negative 3. And then divide it by the 7. So those cancel, and I get t is a negative 3 sevenths. And then here, I'm going to add the 12 first. So 4t will equal a positive 12, and then divide by 4. So that cancels, and t equals 3. All right, so the first one was just giving you practice. Um, the second one, you had to factor. So I'm not doing it because I want y'all to practice your factoring. But I will do one like the third one where you got to factor. So this one, solve 3n squared plus 16n plus 13 equals 0. Sadly, there's not a greatest common factor, but we do know that this will factor into two sets of parentheses. N squared will be an N and an N. This is positive, so everybody will have the same sign as the middle. But y'all remember, since I got a number in front, I got to multiply to 3 times 13. So 3 times 13 is 39. Now, this is plus. So, y'all, I want factors of 39 that will add to get 16. So, y'all, what factors of 39 will add and give me a 16? 13 and 3. 13 and 3. So sometimes it's the two numbers you're multiplying. So we bring our 3 over and our 13. Now remember, since we multiplied that 3 to get to 39, we got to divide that 3 back out of those two numbers. All right, y'all, look at this. 3 over 3 will turn into a 1. Now, this one, remember, it won't divide. So when I factored it, I have to bring that 3 in front of the n and make that a 3n plus 13. All right, so now it's factored. So now we get to solve them. But y'all, like I said, all we're doing is changing the signs of these answers. Now, you see right here, you had a positive 13 over 3. Watch what my final answer is there. So this one, you get a negative 1. Here, you're going to subtract 13 so that 3n equals a negative 13. And then you're going to divide by 3. And y'all look at that. Uh, that cancels n. So up here where you had the positive 13 over 3, the answer is going to be a negative 13 over 3. Since that one didn't reduce, it's always the fraction that you'll get on the final answer. Just change the sign, okay? All righty, so I'm going to do one more. Like number four. So there's only four in this section. 
So this one says solve 4x squared minus 28 equals 0. Now, these are being subtracted, but this 28 is not a perfect square. So I can't do my perfect square stuff. So since I can't do the perfect squares like I did while go, I'm going to solve this by taking a square root. So I need to get the x squared over here by itself with a 1 in front of it. So first, we're going to add 28. So that's going to give you your 4x squared equals 28. And remember, I want that to be a 1x squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by that 4. So those cancel and I get my x squared equals 7. All right, so the x squared by itself now, we can do the square roots. And this will be a plus or minus square root of 7. So, y'all, the radicals cancel, leaving my x. And let's see, that's going to be, what, a plus or minus? Well, y'all, we can't do nothing with that square root of 7. So, it's going to stay square root of 7. So, that's why this is one factor, because it had radical type answers, okay? So your number four will probably end up with radicals like mine. Your number three will probably end up with one number and one fraction, okay? All right, y'all. So Monday won't be that bad with the last section. It's not too bad. And then uh, we'll, we'll decide... Uh, if we review or if we do the other, okay? So let me see what this chat is saying. Yeah, I meant Tuesday. <laughs> oh, y'all going to be busy with that eclipse on Monday probably, so Tuesday for y'all, okay? All righty, that's it for today. So let me see this chat now. <laughs> All right, laughing back. All righty, y'all. So let me stop this share. And I'm going to stop my video so I can send it later. <laughs>